If you're learning a musical instrument, I'm sure at some point your teacher has asked you, have you practiced or told you to practice? I mean, I'm actually a music teacher myself and I'm always asking my students, have they practiced? And I think in the right context, the concept of practice can and should be a really positive one. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what practice means and maybe help you to rewire any negative connotations that you might have about practicing your instrument. And I'm gonna do that by showing you four really concrete pillars on which to build your practice. Now I'm Rory and I'm a percussionist and music teacher and I make tutorials and documentaries and all kinds of stuff like that over on YouTube, which you can check out some other time. And during my life to date, I've had both really effective practice rituals and then also chaotic, sometimes actually pretty toxic and definitely unproductive practice periods too. So first, before we do anything, it's worth differentiating between learning and practicing. The learning happens first, usually in a music lesson or by watching a YouTube video or by participating in a course, some shape or form or a workshop. We engage with new material that isn't familiar and we're taking that time to allow our brain to absorb that information. We are acquiring skills and knowledge and also developing our understanding. Like for example, if I asked you to tell me about your favorite TV show or your favorite food, that would be easy. Though if I asked you to do it in Japanese first, you need to learn the language of Japanese unless of course you speak Japanese, which is amazing. And that's similar to a piece of music or an exercise or a study or technique. You have to learn it first before you practice it. Now, why is this even important? Well, think about computer coding, right? Pages and pages of numbers and letters and symbols. I don't get any of it, but you know what I'm talking about. If one digit is in the wrong place, it can crash like the whole computer server site. So we must focus on absorbing and learning the new material correctly first before we practice. If we learn it wrong, then practice it wrong. We are coding our brain to do the wrong thing. And when I say wrong, what I actually mean is like playing the notes of the rhythm incorrectly or playing it with sloppy technique or with lots of tension or without musical phrasing. And that leads us to the first pillar in this video, which is structure. Now this is maybe the most important pillar of building a meaningful and effective practice on your instrument. There are so many reasons why structure can make or break your progress, but in the first instance, it gives us a starting point. And as you learn more and as you practice more, you can of course go off the track and take more freestyle approach, but structure to start with is really important. So. To get started, why don't you try my four by five method? It's a great framework for setting out, particularly if you're in the early stages of making music. So when I say four by five, I mean four times five minutes. So four chunks of five minutes, and you can stretch that or double it up depending on what amount of time you have to dedicate to your practice. The first little chunk of five minutes is tuning in. And this is where we are tuning into the musical part of the brain. Exercises like scales and long notes and simple grooves or rhythms are really good for this, making sure that you're playing with a relaxed, correct technique and that you're tuning into the senses that we need for our music making, which is the eyes, our ears, and of course, touch. And that you're breathing deeply. And if you have an instrument that tunes, quite literally tuning it up, getting ready to play your instrument. Getting your fingers moving also is really important if you're using dexterity, like playing a keyboard instrument or warming up the lips for articulation on a wind instrument. Scales are really good or rudiments if you're a percussionist or drummer. Also really good little exercises like physical stretches are super, super important for this first part of our practice session. The second part of our practice session is revision revisiting what you did the last time that you played your instrument. Maybe it's a piece of repertoire that you've been working on or something familiar, your favorite tune or whatever. Here you're repeating something you know or that you already have been working on. Maybe you're working on a particular technical thing like a long roll on the snare drum or a finger picking pattern on the guitar and you're revisiting this. And this is because repetition is super important but make sure that it's mindful repetition, not mindless repetition. The third chunk of our practice structure is going to be learning, challenging yourself with new music or new musical concepts. And this is really central to constantly developing as a musician. Make sure to always incorporate a portion of new material into each 
practice session. This could be a new segment in the piece that you are learning, a new drum rudiment, a new scale, a new technique, something new. It also keeps your practice interesting. And by only playing the same thing over and over again, we're kind of putting ourselves into a musical practice form of Groundhog Day. And your practice should always be evolving. And this will happen if you incorporate and learn new material every time you practice. The fourth chunk in our practice structure is going to be free play. And in early childhood pedagogy, there's a big focus on play and play-based learning. And as we go along through school and higher education, it seems to dissipate and get weaned out. And actually, in my view for music and any artistic or creative practice, it's crucial for artistic development, exploring off the track and enjoying free play. Improvisation or making music up on the spot is a great way to explore this. And if you'd like to learn more about improvisation, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do a video on that, on a couple of different approaches to starting an improvisation practice. Another great thing to do is start writing your own music, composition, composing. This is a great way to incorporate some free play into your practice too. So going back to the four pillars that I spoke about at the beginning of the video, the second pillar that we're gonna explore for building our practice is good habits. Success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime of transformations. That's a really great quote from habit building guru, James Clear, whose book Atomic Habits is well worth a read. And it's an accessible and fast tracked approach to habit building. He breaks down habit forming into four blocks. First is make it obvious. The second is make it irresistible or attractive. And the third is make it easy. The fourth is make it satisfying. How can these relate to our musical practice though? Let's take the first, make it obvious. So the four by five minute structure I outlined in the first part of this video is a great example of simplifying a dense and multifaceted process. Writing down those four points makes it even more obvious. Making a practice calendar with allocated days and times makes it more obvious again. Removing distractions like phones and devices will help you to clear your mind, allowing you to focus on your plan with clarity of thought. These are all great examples of making it more obvious. The second is make it attractive. Make a nice cup of your favorite hot drink before your practice session. I mean, it's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and also in terms of content, practice music or songs or grooves that you like and that inspire you. As a professional musician, sometimes I've got to learn and practice music that I'm not massively inspired by, but by pairing it with things that I do like, it makes the experience much more enjoyable. It's all about balance. The third point is make it easy. And this is particularly good if you're struggling to find that motivation to practice. James Clear in his book talks about starting really small and he talks about the two minute rule, which I love. And it's scaling your practice down to something that takes two minutes or less. And that could be tuning your instrument, playing one groove or scale with a metronome at 60 BPM learning one bar of a new piece. The focus is on building the habit, not the outcome of the actual practice itself. The fourth and final is make it satisfying. Celebrate your achievements and reward yourself after practicing your habit and keep a log of your practice streak. 30 days in a row checked off on your practice calendar is always gonna be inspiring as you walk past it on the fridge where you have it pinned. The third pillar that I want to talk about is slow it down. I want you to try something for me. Think about sitting on a speeding train and looking out the window, trying to pick out details in the landscape. As your eyes dart, it's difficult, maybe even impossible to decipher a clear image of what you are seeing. Your eyes and brain can process the overall scene, but it's hard to build a meaningful picture of what you're looking at. And that to me is what learning and practicing music too fast is like. You get an overall picture, but none of the details that make that piece of music unique or special. Itzhak Perlman, who's not only one of the greatest violinists, but one of the most important musical thinkers and teachers of our time, once said that he would rather you practice in your head for two hours than practice at speed. So always worth really thinking about practice slowly. Now, if you are like me, 
and you like coffee and you have a habit of speeding up in your practice. There's a tool designed especially to keep you in first or second gear and to get that practice really slow and steady. It's called a metronome. And it also has the added bonus of keeping you in time too. So take a tricky passage of music, a fiddly rhythm or the exercise that you're working on at the moment and put your metronome to 60 BPM, 60 beats per minute and practice it at that speed for one week every day for five minutes on a timer. And let me know how it goes and I'll bet that you'll feel a benefit of practicing slowly on your instrument. My fourth and final pillar of building a practice is mindset. Now I don't want to overcomplicate this. The mind can be both simple and complex depending on the prism through which you view it. So instead I'm going to share with you three little mantras that I've picked up. I can't really remember where but I use them a lot and I like them a lot. The first is practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes more practice. The concept of perfection or perfectionism is ultimately going to be damaging for your practice, not least because it sets you up for failure. In principle, perfection in music is unachievable and at best subjective. Instead of thinking about getting something perfect, why not think about the time spent practicing, the minutes, hours, days and eventually years worth of practice and the progress made as opposed to the imperfection of the results of practicing. My second little mantra I want to share in this video is enjoy the journey. I want to briefly talk about end gaining, a lovely word or concept used in the Alexander technique. And end gaining is where we are only focused on the goal of our practice. Goals are important without a goal, how are we supposed to score anything? Though the path to reaching those goals are actually just as important as in the means whereby we achieve our goals, the journey. Think about a difficult journey you've been on at some point in your life. Maybe it was a rush hour subway journey or a 16 hour flight on a jam packed plane full of screaming children, my worst nightmare. It makes you never wanna get on a plane or a train at rush hour ever again. But then think about an enjoyable journey, maybe a boat ride in the Caribbean or a drive on a quiet road in the countryside a beautiful crisp autumn day, it makes you want to take that journey again. And whilst these are quite abstract examples, by focusing on the journey itself and making it as enjoyable as possible, I found it much easier to build a meaningful practice as a percussionist and drummer myself. Finally, the last little mantra I'd like to share with you is that the stakes are really low in music. It's easy to be hard on ourselves and beat ourselves up if we aren't making the progress that we want in the time frame we expect. If we were learning, for example, how to fly a plane or carry out some very complex medical procedure, the stakes are really high. The risk is high. We can't afford to make any mistakes. And that's just not the case with music. It's easy to lose sight of this. And certainly it has been for me. And worth remembering that we can strive for excellence without beating ourselves up if it doesn't happen straight away. So I hope you found this video helpful and you can incorporate some of these strategies and techniques into your practice. Let me know how you get on in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Check out my channel for some other interesting videos. In fact, there's one video on there about rhythm and how to improve your sense of rhythm. I'm gonna link that right over here in case you'd like to check that out. And you can also subscribe to the channel for more documentaries and tutorials in and around music. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. -bye.